Google Ads is the secret weapon that helped me grow my Shopify store over a million dollars in the last 12 months. It's a super simple strategy that once it's set up, it only takes around 10 minutes a week to manage to help you grow your Shopify store. Now, before I stumbled across this strategy, I'd been using Google Ads for quite a while. I was running search-based campaigns, I was running shopping campaigns, I was testing smart shopping campaigns, I was bidding on brand keywords. I was pretty much doing everything that you should be doing in Google Ads. However, my results were just mediocre and and not that amazing. I'd spent hours of testing, I'd spent thousands of dollars, and I just couldn't find the thing that would take my store from here all the way up to here until I stumbled across this really easy strategy. And it was actually really surprising at how easy it was. And I'm gonna show you that today. In fact, it's that easy that it doesn't matter where you are in your Shopify journey, whether you're just starting out or whether you've already got an established store, this is gonna work for anyone. So in this tutorial, what I wanna do is I want to give you an over the shoulder look straight into an ad account of mine. We're gonna go through how to set it up, how to do your bidding, how to create your asset, how to do everything that you need to do to get this campaign up and running. My goal is by the end of this tutorial, all you're going to have to do is copy and paste everything that we've done into your own ad account, click publish, and sales are gonna start coming in. Now, before we get started on the tutorial, I wanna ask you just a little favor. I need to know that you're liking these sort of videos. So if you could just subscribe to the channel, that's gonna to signal to me that these are the types of content that you wanna hear from me, and I will create more of them. So I'll give you a second to do that now, and then we'll get straight into my computer. All right, time's up, thank you so much for subscribing. Let's get into the learning. Now, if you're new to Google Ads and Shopify, you're going to have to do a little bit of setup before you can start your Google Ads campaign. Now, the way Google Ads works is it uses a tool in between, which is called Google Merchant Center. And what Google Merchant Center does is it holds all the products and the information about your Shopify store, it translates it, and then it sends it into Google. So what you're gonna need to do beforehand is create a Google Merchant Center account and then connect that into your Shopify store. Now, I've created a video about that on my channel. So feel free to go and search for that and do that beforehand. You're gonna to need to have that done before you can start this Google Ads campaign. For those of you that have already done it, let's keep going. I want you to open your Google Ads campaign and we're gonna click new campaign. When we're in here, we're going to click sales. Oh, before we go too far into this, I did actually create a step-by-step -step checklist so you can follow along at home. You can grab it down below, but it's basically pretty much everything we're gonna go through in this video. So you can make sure that you're checking everything off that you need to check. It's got every little step that you need to take so that even after this video, you can have it there for every time that you set up a Google Ads campaign. So go ahead and download that below. All right, back to Google Ads. So here we were, we are choosing the sales campaign. And what I want you to do is with these conversion goals, we wanna make sure we've only got the purchases conversion goal in here. So if you've got anything else in there, just go through and click remove. Let's remove that in there. The reason we only wanna choose a purchase conversion goal is because what we wanna do is get more purchases. If we have too many goals in there, as the algorithm tries to find you customers, it's gonna either try and find them for phone calls, it's gonna try and find them for add to carts, page views, whatever's in there. If you have too many goals in here, you're gonna confuse the algorithm and it's not sure what it is going to do. So we wanna keep it really laser focused and we just want to optimize it for purchases. Click continue. What's gonna happen here, it's gonna give us the campaign type. Now the campaign type we're gonna be doing is called Performance Max. So click that. And then this is the part we talk about the Merchant Center. So we need to have this ticked here and we're gonna go in and we're gonna choose our Merchant Center account. We're gonna rename our campaign now. We're gonna call it Pmax. And here what we're going to do is we're going to name it based on the products that we want to sell. So when it comes to the naming, you can see we're creating something called a Performance Max campaign. Now, Performance Max campaign is really powerful, especially when it comes to Shopify, because what we can do is we can create one campaign that advertises across all of Google's platforms. The areas that it'll advertise in is not only your search engine, but it's gonna advertise in the Google Shopping, it's gonna advertise in Gmail, it's even gonna advertise across YouTube. So by setting this up, it means that we have the full spectrum of ads with just one single ad campaign. But that's not all it does well. It uses AI and it goes out and finds the type of audience. So this is where it gets important on how we set this campaign up. The way I want you to think about it is we wanna use one campaign per product collection that we're trying to sell. So in my world, I'm trying to sell boxing gloves. Now we have you know, 20 or 30 different pairs of boxing gloves and that appeals to people who are searching for boxing. So we have a thing which we call search intent. What are people actually searching for on Google and how do we make sure our ads show when they're searching for them? So when we set up a Performance Max campaign, it's actually best to do it based on the collection or the item that someone is searching for so that we can tailor the campaign around that. If we put everything in it, Google's not gonna know what sort of customer to find and who to show 
show the ads to. So we wanna make sure that we focus it in here. We sell lots of things on our store from, you know, boxing shoes to karate uniforms. So I'm not gonna put it all in here because if I had, you know, an all products campaign and someone searches for karate uniforms, but boxing gloves shows up, it's not gonna be very relevant. Whereas if I have a boxing gloves campaign and someone searches for boxing gloves, we bring that up. So in this instance, I'm gonna call it boxing gloves. So now we're in the section where we need to work out how we're going to bid on this. There's a number of different bidding strategies. Now, if I'm starting out a Performance Max campaign, I choose focusing on conversions over conversion value. And the reason I do this is because we want the Google algorithm to learn as fast as possible. So what conversions does is it says, hey Google, I'm more than happy for you to spend some money and get me as many conversions as possible. And I don't really care the value of those conversions. Because what we're doing here is we're getting it to go out and learn as quickly as possible what a customer looks like on your store. Once we get at least 50 conversions, we then can change this bidding strategy to be conversion value. And what that means is it will now go and try and find more people that are willing to spend more. Now, the reason we do conversions first is it doesn't know how much people are willing to spend if it's a brand new account. So we can't say conversion value because it doesn't know the value that it's trying to look for. Does that make sense? We have to do conversions first and then conversion value. Now, we don't wanna set a target cost per action just yet. That's something we can do in the future once we have the learning. And we're just gonna skip over this and not choose new customers. We'll click next. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you'll choose the country that you wanna to advertise to. One thing that I just wanna stress here is don't try and do too many countries at once if you've got a small budget. Just try and start in one to two regions that are similar so that we can expand our budget over time. If we spread it across too many countries, that means our budget gets diluted. So just choose one or two countries that you wanna target. And in our world, we're gonna choose Australia, we're not gonna worry about languages, but we are gonna choose something here where we say automatically created assets. So the Pmax campaign basically goes out and creates assets for you so that it can be advertised on different platforms. It's called automatically created assets. So it goes and looks at your site, it pulls up the pages, it pulls out the words and it creates assets around it. Now, there are some pages on our site that we don't want it to do that. So that's where we can exclude those URLs. Those pages are things like your privacy policy, your search results pages, you know, pages that we don't really wanna send traffic to. So we're gonna click in exclude some URLs and we're going to create a rule and we're going to go to our Shopify store and we're going to find a little page here that we don't want to advertise to. So as an example, we don't want Google to advertise our privacy policy. So if we look at the URL here, we can see that it has a structure. It has the domain, it has a subfolder and it also has the page itself. Now, if we go to a few other pages, we go to the bottom of this, let's just say we go to our refund policy, we can see the URL, the, the word pages remains the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the word pages, we're gonna go into the URL, and we're gonna say URL contains pages, okay? When we click add. So what that's going to do is that's gonna exclude Google from advertising any page on your website with the URL pages in it. Now it's not gonna exclude products because if we have a look at our products page, boxing gloves, we can see this says collections. And if we go into a product itself, we can see this has the products in there. So it's not gonna exclude anything in here. We can also do the same thing for our cart and we can do the same thing for our checkout. Basically all you wanna do is you just wanna go in here and exclude any pages that you don't want to be advertised in Google. Once we've done that, we click apply and we click next. So now we're presented with something relatively new to Google, which is asset generation. Now this is Google's AI going in and helping you build out this campaign. They're gonna try and make it super easy for you. Now I don't mind this, this does an okay job. So what we need to do is fill this out with as much information as possible so that it can start to create at least 50% of this campaign for us. So we're gonna be advertising boxing gloves. So if I go back here, and I go to my boxing gloves collection. I'm going to copy that URL. I'm gonna go back to the campaign. And we're gonna paste it in here. Now what's gonna happen here is Google's gonna go across. It's going to scan your page and it's gonna try and build out the ads for you based on what it learns off your page. So if you've got a well executed page with great content on there, great SEO, then it's gonna know exactly what you're advertising. Let's have a look and see what's come back on my one. Okay, so it's gone through and it says what I'm advertising, boxing gloves and gear, product reviews. I'm not doing that, okay? So we can get rid of that, but we can add some things in here. What products or services are you advertising? Boxing gloves and gear. I'm gonna type in boxing gloves. I'm gonna type in men's boxing gloves, kids boxing gloves, just all the products that is in this collection, women's boxing gloves. Okay, so we're gonna give it lots of information there. And then let's have a look at what makes us unique. So it's grabbed everything from there. So just take a look at yours and see whether this makes sense. And then it says select pages to enhance images from. So it's gone straight to the collection page. Let's click generate assets and see what it does for us. What it's doing now is it's actually going through and filling out the ads based on what it's learned. So we're gonna go let it do that while we're setting up the campaign. Now Google Ads 
is structured this way. We've created a campaign and within the campaign, we have things called asset groups. Now asset groups is what holds the ad and it's what we put our information into. So now we're gonna go and fill out an asset group so we can build out the ads that Google is gonna send across the internet for us. So I'm gonna call this asset group men's boxing gloves. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select the products that we wanna sell. This is really important because if you have lots of products on your store, you don't wanna be advertising all products in this boxing gloves campaign. You only want to be advertising the boxing gloves. So we're gonna use a selection of products and I'm gonna choose product type and I'm gonna go through and we've got boxing gloves in there. Great. So we click save. So let's scroll down. What we can see now is Google's actually filled all these headlines in for us based on the asset generation that it did for us. So what you need to do now is just have a look through here and just make sure that these all make sense. Uh, okay, boxing gloves, Australia, boxing gloves, women's, yep, yep. Everything looks okay. Oh, we're not selling MMA gloves in this one, so we can remove that one. We're not selling boxing pads. Okay, we might wanna clear these out a little bit. What we want these ones to be is really specific to the keyword that you are trying to be found for. So if someone's searching for boxing gloves, we want these headlines to be what they're searching for or what we think they're searching for. So these are all pretty good. Men's boxing gloves, gloves for men and women, shop boxing gloves, Muay Thai boxing gloves. We might get rid of that because we're not gonna do that on this one. Boxing gloves with the brand, that's a good one. Awesome. And if there's any extra ones you wanna add in here, make sure you do it. But we want these to be keyword driven that is revolved around your product. Okay, great. So it's also now done long headlines. Let's have a look at these ones. Shop boxing gloves online. Yep. Get the best boxing gloves. Yep. Perfect. We wouldn't change that. All right. Let's have a look at the descriptions. Just to go back for a second. The long headlines are basically the short headlines extended is a good way to think about this. They should still be keyword rich in terms of the products that you sell, but we just extend them out with the offer that the site has. All right. Descriptions. These are really good. Typically what we would put in here is things like, you know, what your unique value proposition is like free shipping. So uh, I'd probably have something here like get the best boxing gloves you're training at Fight Gear Direct. Free shipping over $200. Okay, so a little bit of a unique value proposition as to why they should buy from us. Okay, choose from wide selection of boxing gloves and gear, uh, the best in Australia. Okay, so this is more convincing them to click the ad. The other one is showing them that's the thing they're searching for and this one convinces them to click it. All right, let's keep going down. Now what it's gone and done is it's gone and found images on our website of products that we have. So that's really good. We don't have to go and do that ourselves. So you can either go through and just select the ones that it's found, okay? And it's also generated some with AI as well, which is pretty cool. So you can go through and select, I'm gonna select a few here. So we know that's one we wanna sell. Uh, I know that's one, that's one, one. So that's the first way we do it. The second way we do it is we can upload our own images. And this is where I like to put in lifestyle images. So here, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna click edit and I've already uploaded some previously. So we can see them here in the asset library. So I've got lots of different images here. So I've got this one, I got this one here. I got some ones on the floor. I got these ones here. So I like to have a combination of product shots and these sort of lifestyle shots because they get shown in different places and they appeal to different people. So what we're gonna do here is we're now gonna select how they look in different ratios. So we can click here, that looks good. That probably just needs a little bit moving here and we can click select three ratios. And we can actually do that on every single image just by clicking this little button here. That one looks okay. Uh, maybe we'll bring that across. That one maybe bring it across as well. Now, if there's images where those ratios don't work, what we can do is we can click in, we can see that one works fine, but if we were to choose another one, let me untick that, we can see it doesn't really work very well. We'd probably want to move that across or we don't even need to have it at all. So that's how we wanna edit our images. So what I recommend is you go through and upload a combination of product shots as well as lifestyle or shots where the product is in use or in a different environment just so it stands out. Now you can have up to 20 assets in here. Click save and let's go down a little bit more. So we definitely need to upload our logo. We've already got one here. So we can click that. It's suggested that in for us. Right, let's go down and we're gonna choose our business name. So fight me here. Direct. Now, if you do have videos, I highly recommend you upload them. The great thing about adding videos to this is these videos are gonna get shown across YouTube, which means you're not only gonna be in Google search, but you're going to be in YouTube. Now, I saw this happen on one of my stores. I was sitting watching YouTube on my TV the other night and one of my ads came on my television, but it was being fed through from YouTube and I was pretty pumped about it because I'm like, hey, my ad's on television. Uh, and that was all from this Performance Max campaign. So if you've got videos, highly urge you to put them in here. We can either do the horizontal style 
videos, which do work the best because it's a YouTube format, but we can also do the tall videos if we wanted to put in here because then that goes into YouTube shorts. So to add videos, we click add videos. I've got one here and we click save. That will add that in there. All right, so site links are super important as well. Site links are the little links that come under the main ad. I'll see if I can show you what it looks like here. Yeah, this is one here. We can see this is the main ad and these under here are site links. So what we wanna do here is we wanna create links to other parts of the site that support the product that you have. So if I think about boxing gloves, usually people that buy boxing gloves might also buy boxing shorts. So what we wanna have here is the main link being boxing gloves, which we're advertising, but these site links should be the secondary sort of categories within it. And to add a site link, we click edit and we can create a new one and just fill out all the information. Now, I'm not gonna take you through how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Just fill it out and create it. And then it's gonna give you these little things that you can add in there, all right? All right, let's keep going through. Now, the next part is the call to action. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. One is we can just let Google choose and it's gonna to test to see which one is the best. A call to action is things like shop now, uh, learn more, get quote, apply now. Uh, I usually just let Google automate it for us because once it finds one that works, it's just gonna show that all the time. As much as we think shop now is what we want them to do, sometimes learn more works better or view now and things like that. And we're just gonna let Google's algorithm go and do that for us. As we keep going down, this is where we start to create the audience that we're trying to target. And Google calls these audience signals. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that Google is definitely gonna show your ad if these keywords are typed in. It just tells Google that anyone that has typed this keyword in the past is a likely customer or the person you're trying to target. So let's go through these signals now. I'll show you what I would put in here and I want you to try and think how you do it for your store. So it calls these search themes. So I'm gonna just type in the same things that I did in my headline, like boxing gloves, men's boxing gloves, beginner boxing glove. Could even have things in here like black boxing gloves. I could put in the brand Fairtex boxing gloves, etc. Okay, so we wanna fill this out with as many potential search terms that your customer is going to search. So that's the first thing we wanna do. The second thing we wanna do is we wanna add in an audience signal. Now, if you've connected your Google Analytics to your Google Ads, you're gonna have some audience data in here. So we're gonna click in here, audience data, and you should already see it in here. I typically just choose all users as many days as possible, right? Because this is showing that if you've had someone come to your store, we've got a signal in there and Google knows that that's the type of person that you want to target. So we just wanna fill that in there. Then we go into additional signals. Now this is, comes down to interests and behavior. So what I like to do here is I'll often go into interests here and I will choose in-market segments or things that I think the type of customer that I'm targeting is gonna be interested into. Now, the cool thing about this is if you've got a little bit of data already in here, Google's gonna suggest them to you. So we can see we have this tag here, which is in-market. In-market basically means that it knows that people that are in this segment are interested in buying things. That's what in-market means. If you have something that says, say, affinity, then that means that they have an affinity with this topic, but they're not necessarily buying in this category. So I typically choose the in-market ones that are related to the products that I sell. So martial arts equipment would, would fit in, Thai boxing would probably fit in, uh, what else we got? Sports and fitness, sporting goods. So these are all things that I think that people would be interested in. So that's giving another signal to Google of the type of person that I want them to find. Now we talk about demographics as well, but I don't really add anything in demographics unless it's really specific to you. So if you're only targeting women, we'd only put women in here. If you're only targeting men, you'd only put men in here. I keep this relatively broad because not everyone self-identifies what they are, what their age is and who they are. So if we try and be too specific here, our audience is gonna get too small. So I keep this super broad. All right, now I wanna give this audience a name. So I'm gonna call this boxing gloves men. Okay, or men's boxing gloves, you can call it whatever you like, just something that you can identify it as. Click next, and now we're gonna talk about budget. This is the biggest question that I get asked, how much do I spend on ads? Now, that answer is different for every single person. I'll give you an example. We've got one brand where we sell coffee, and that coffee is only $29.95. And then I have brand where we sell boxing gloves, and a pair of boxing gloves could be $200. Now, the budgets for those campaigns are gonna be completely different, because if I set a $100 budget for my coffee, I'm going to need to sell quite a few products to pay back that $100 budget. Whereas if I set a $100 budget for boxing gloves, I only need to sell one pair of boxing gloves for $100. So this is where you got to start doing your maths. We need to work out what is our margin on our products and how much of that margin are we willing to spend on our ads? Now I look at it this way. Let's just say I have a 50% margin on a $100 product. That means the product 
sells for $100 and it costs me $50 to buy, which means I have $50 left over to run my business. So what I need to work out is of that $50, how much am I prepared to spend on marketing to acquire new customers? Let's just say I'm gonna spend all that $50 just for the maths. That means that my marketing budget should be at least $50 per day. Now I suggest doubling that. So it should be $100 per day. And the reason I do that is because if we're willing to spend $50 to get a customer and we only have our budget at $50, we'll only ever get one customer a day. And we're not going to give Google enough information for it to go and find us customers. Okay. So I'd recommend looking at, you know, one to two times the profit that you're willing to spend on acquiring a customer for your budget. So in this world, because we have, you know, $200 products, our margins are about, let's say, let's just say $50 on those products, we would set our daily budget to be around $100 a day. Okay, so we'll choose that $100 a day. And that means I've given Google enough money to go out and find me customers. And I'm still restricting it a little bit. So I'm not overspending, but I'm also not underspending. All right, let's go next. Now what's going to happen here is Google is going to go and double check that you've set everything up right, make sure there's no errors, and then give you the green light to set it live. And if all goes well, it should come back and say your campaign is ready to publish. So now what we do here is we click publish campaign. And that's it. That is all ready and set up and good to go. So if you didn't get a chance, I do have the checklist. Grab that down below. Just follow that along. It basically takes you through every step we just did there. Now what I did from here is I created one of these campaigns for every collection that I have in my store. And I just look at them every single week. I have a look at what the data is doing and then I make adjustments to it. I either spend more budget, remove a few products, add a few products, just a few things around, but I only spend about 10 minutes every Monday morning editing that. And this has helped my e-commerce store grow month on month on month on month. And I actually don't need to do too much work. Now, obviously I can only go through the basics on this one. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to run Google ads and grow your Shopify store, I do have an e-commerce bootcamp that you can join. Now I've got the link down below if you're interested in that. It's super fun, super cool. We don't just teach Google ads, but we teach meta ads, email marketing, SEO, website optimization, everything you need to know to grow your e-commerce business. So I'd love to see you in there and help you grow your Shopify store. In the meantime, there are other videos that I put out just like this that's gonna help you grow your business. Feel free to click one that is floating around me here.